Hello there, this is Cece Schatz and you are listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network and it's so great to have you on the show here with us. The show is called Going Solo with Cece and we talk about all kinds of things, anything that has to do with rebuilding a relationship for you, taking you through another level, a plateau in your life, anything that will move you forward in a very positive way. That's what I hope that we bring you here on Going Solo with CC. Just to share with you, I had started um, this show many years ago and it, was, it started as um, Going Solo Life After Divorce because as many of you going through relationship loss, I just didn't know what I was going to do. I thought, is there truly life after this most horrendous experience that I'm going through? Is my life over? And then I started to realize, you know what? It's just begun, right? It's just started. And so as I started to move forward in my relationship loss, I started to discover myself and a lot of different avenues and twists and turns my life has taken me, some very good and some, you know, very hurtful. But I will say with that, I have learned a great deal along the way. But I wanted to bring this show to you because, and we changed the name to Going Solo with CC out of um, the wisdom of some of the broadcasting people that I associate with, my peers, because they felt like it's, the show should be more about what's going on in in my life as I'm moving through, you know, being single, um, getting through the divorce, getting through um, starting to learn about myself, the transition into dating, then actually dating, and then some of the ups and downs with that, rebuilding my life as a single person, being a single parent, and then also embracing, you know, who I am today and where I want to be as a business person, as um, a mother, as a single person. I mean, there was just so much to go and to do and to learn. And so with each, each step I've had, I've had to really kind of learn a lot of new um, experiences. You really kind of take from those and uh, relish in the fact that even when something's not a positive thing for me, it didn't turn out as, as I had expected. Now, I'm not going to say it wasn't positive, but as I didn't expect, what learning, um, you know, what did I learn from that, right? And so that's, that's how going solo with CC has evolved over all these years. And so we're still moving forward and we're still grasping onto uh, technology. We're on a brand new platform. I hope you guys like it with something a little bit different. Um, we're hoping that we can do uh we can do live on Facebook and we can do live on YouTube. So it'd be kind of a nice thing for us. Oh, we've got a call coming in. I don't know if this, what this call is. Sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, so what I wanted to talk to you tonight about, which I think is very, very important, is about building relationships after relationship loss. And that's what it's about. So let me just show that to you. How to build a friendship after relationship loss. Why is this so important? Well, as we're traveling through our relationship loss, often we find that we don't have any friends, right? We've uh, we've lost all of our friends from the marriage. People don't really know how to react to us, so they step away from us. So we really don't have any so to speak, relationships. The other thing is we also start to, uh, as we start to evolve, we start to learn a little bit more about ourselves and we start to evaluate the relationships that we do have and the ones that we want to have. So as we're going to take this journey tonight on building relationships, we're going to talk a little bit about going through the relationship loss, picking you up and moving you forward into building relationships. I want to also transition you into dating, into the aspect of possibly dating and looking at possibly you know, starting starting on that venture too, and building relationships with that. So let's take um, let's take the toll. Let's uh, go with it because I have some uh, direction here that I do want to take this show in. And the very first um, experience is is that be ready emotionally. So often we step into relationships when we're not emotionally 
ready, right? We we decide to ourselves, you know, being single is sometimes a very lonely place to be. Often people think, oh, singles, you have this wild life, you have this, you have that. We're truly, in all retrospect, we don't. We're lonely, you know, we're by ourselves. And so the best thing that we can do for ourselves is really start building relationships of quality, right? And in order to build a relationship of quality, we have to be emotionally ready for it. So often we'll build friendships, which are just neither here nor there, right? We'll um, have relationships with people that really are not what we really want them to be. And a lot of it is because we're not emotionally ready for it. And being emotionally ready is not only, it's a give and take. When you're a friendship with someone, right? It's a give and take experience. And sometimes you're really wanting so much that you're not giving. And, uh, and a lot of times when we look back on a lot of our relationships in the past, that's exactly what it, what it was, is that we weren't able to actually give. And the reason we couldn't necessarily give, especially in this particular time in our lives, is because we're still grieving an old relationship. We're still grieving a situation that happened to us. We're still grieving what we thought our relationship was going to be. So often in our lives, we take a path where we want to envision our lives to be such and such. You know, we think, oh, this and this and that's going to happen. If we do ABC, the results will be this. And then when it's not, we, we're disappointed. But what we don't realize is that we have to keep going ABC and continue on, right? We have to continue on the steps to be able to move forward in our lives. And so, to be to step off and say, you know, I am emotionally ready. I have done the work on myself that I'm ready to now take on a new friendship. I want to embrace that friendship um, the way really it should be. And so that is so very, very vital, very, very important to do that. The next thing is you want to be careful when you're when you're embarking on rebuilding relationships with people. And this could be the opposite sex, it could be the same sex, it could just be relationships on a whole, right? As you're moving forward in your life as a divorced person or or a relationship loss, going through a relationship loss, your, um, your relationships with people are going to evolve, right? And if there are good relationships, they're going to stand the test of time. And they're also going to stand the the um, the situation as it continues on going. It's going to be embraced by that, right? So as you're uh, looking forward into moving forward in your life, you have to remember you have kids, right? If you have kids, you want to pay attention to that. Now, I've found that it's very, very important to really let your kids also take that step with you with regards to building and grieving and moving forward because they too have their own experiences in life that they're going to um, have to, to embrace. Right. And so we as parents want to make sure that our kids are on the same page, that they understand that, you know, mom and dad now are going to move forward in their life into another direction, into another path, and that they can in turn do the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry but they can embrace that and make sure that things will go good for them. I'm sorry. I have to take a drink. When I have a guest, I can kind of move it off to them. <coughs> I'm getting choked up. I do apologize. So anyhow, but we want to make sure our kids are, are ready to embrace this new, this new, you know, um, path that we're going to be going on. We want to make sure that they understand what's going to happen and that their world isn't going to change when it comes to parenting, when it comes to their family makeup. And I think it's so vi very vital that in order for us to be able to move forward, if we're parents, right, we want to make sure that we make a path for our children so they can also continue to grow as we move forward in the relationship, we have to make sure that they feel secure in the relationship that we have with them. Right. And so we want to make sure that they understand that things are not going to necessarily 
change our love is it going to change our time is it going to change things are not going to change it's actually we're actually going to be embracing life and as as life is it has to evolve and i think these are all steps they're all baby steps that you're gonna be taking and so i think if we want to talk about being a single parent we'll do that on another show but i also think that we shouldn't sugarcoat things for our kids you know we should make sure that they're aware because they're smarter than you realize you know and and of course age appropriate Appropriate, but we want to make sure that they're aware of what what we're going to do and how we're going to be doing it and that they're they feel secure with each step that we take. So I think that's important. But we'll cover, um, you know, being single and parenting on another show. The other thing is you want to be honest and direct with your communication at all times. You always want to be and you want to be sensitive to other people's um, other people's feelings and their thought process. Because sometimes we don't do that, do we, right? When we meet someone, we're not always sensitive to their thought process of how they're going to be able to um, accept what we're saying. You know, they're not, they, are, are they going to be able to really understand all that's taking place with regards to, you know, life itself and what you've experienced and how you've gone through your life. And so you want to be very sensitive with your communication as you're sharing. But here's the reality is you don't have to share everything, right? As you're building a relationship, you want to embrace your relationship and you want to, it's a give and take experience. So you want to be able to do that. And so that is very, very important. And the thing is, is as you're giving and taking, as you're sharing uh, life's experiences, you're building and bonding. And so you're creating a, a relationship right there in itself. And that's a wonderful thing. Um, the, the next thing is to um, don't think that all men or women are like your ex, you know, and I, I probably had a, a bit of that myself. I think I think we all kind of do because not only do we kind of do that we're fearful of it so it kind of comes into our minds right and so then we destroy any chances that we have to be able to move forward with anyone else because we think everybody is going to be dishonest or you know if your ex was dishonest and I, i'm assuming <laughs> because mine was but if you're but you can't assume that everyone is going to be like that so you want to really um you know, step back from that and evaluate each person that you meet based on the merits of them. So here's the thing. You got to get to know them in order to, to establish, a re number one, a relationship with them, to, to establish whether you want a relationship with them. You want to um, get to know them a little bit more so you can figure out if they do have the merits in, in order to have a relationship with them. It can just be, so then you can then decide what type of degree of relationship you want to have. And so we're going to talk about that too, as we get down a little bit further into this. Holding on to your baggage. You know, we talk a lot about baggage. We all have it. And if you think you ever can let go of all your baggage, you're mistaken. You cannot ever let it all go. Because here's the reality. Your baggage is your past, right? But your past is what shaped you. And so, so often we talk about letting go of your baggage, blah, 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 that kind of thing. But here it is. It's life experiences. And sometimes if our baggage has created these life experiences, they are learning places for us. And so rather than look at our past and look at some some uh, maybe twists and turns that our relationships have gone into and some of the pain and some of the joys, right? So what we want to do is we want to kind of look at this stuff and we want to embrace what we can take with us into this new life that we're going to be creating for ourselves. And some of the things that we cannot change which is the other party, right? Whatever they did, as long as we continue to take ownership of their behavior, we are not going to go anywhere. And so that's when we stop doing that is when we start releasing our exes of our past. We start gently letting that baggage go more and more. You know, we're not going to get rid of the baggage, but we're going to gently place it where it needs to go. And hopefully that'll be in a closet with the door shut, <laughs> but we'll get there eventually. Right. But the thing is, is with each step that we've taken in our lives, we've learned something. 
And we're here because this is where we're supposed to be. And I hate to say it, even though I've experienced some some terrible pain. I mean, terrible pain along around the way. I've I've really um, I look at it now, and I just think of all of it as being. If I hadn't have gone through that, where would I be today? You know. And so I am where I'm at because that's where I, I am supposed to be. Now, here's the ticker. If I want to stay here where I'm at, that's a choice that I can make. And so we all have choices that we want to, to, to make. And we want to be able to um, education, you know, educationally go forward in our lives. We want to be smart about what we do, right? And so I think when we're building relationships with people, I think we need to not put so much into it rather than to embrace it and let it evolve, right? Get to know the other party, their experiences, get to know them a little bit, the merits of who they are, their values. We talk about core values a lot on the show. Get to know that to see if we want to be able to go forward. And the, and the last on um, this particular article that I had been doing some research, it said set no, uh, saying no to plans. For instance, how often do we say to ourselves, oh, we got to do this, this, and this, right? Well, why? Why do we have to do this, this, and this? Only because that's what we've, we said we have to do. Well, we're making up the plans, right? We're deciding where we want to go and what we want to do. So therefore, we have a choice in that plan. Now, I'm not saying go wishy-washy in your life. I'm saying that, yeah, we should all have some sort of sense of direction. But I also feel that we need to be able to have the freedom to be able to take a, a step backwards if we want or stall it out a little bit, you know, or maybe just stop and smile and say, you know what, I'm at a good place right now and I'm going to love every minute of it. Or we may say, you know what, this is not working for me. And so I'm going to move forward. And so as we're building relationships with people, those are the things that we have to think about as we're moving through our lives and we're beginning to, you know, take stock of who we are, where we are going, what we want, and you know how to get there. So let me go over those again with you just briefly. You want to be ready emotionally. You want to pay attention to your children. You know, as you're embarking on this new experience of building relationships, whether they be, you know, male or female or intimate type of relationships, you want to be honest and direct in your communication. You want to have a clear understanding not only of your own true being, but also of those around you. So you want to be able to be open and clear on your communication. But in communication is also listening, right? You want to be able to listen to the other party and really take stock of what they have to say. Because I think so often, you know, someone told me one time that a man will tell you in, in 60 seconds what he's all about. You just have to listen. But so often we try to change them, right? We hear what we want to hear. So what I'm going to ask you to lay that down, right? And when you're building a relationship with someone, just take stock in what they're saying and allow some time, allow some things to be able to, to move forward. The other thing is thinking about men and women all like your exes. You know, don't, don't give your ex that much honor and control of your life, right? Don't put them up on a pedestal where you're going to make everyone else either accountable or not account. You don't want them like that, right? So right away you say, oh, they're like my ex and you're just going to discharge them. Well, the reality is, is why give your ex that space? You know, I wouldn't give him, I wouldn't give him a space or her space. Don't, you know, you want to create a life that you want to choose. And so we don't want to do that. Holding on to your baggage, we understand that we're all always going to have some sort of baggage. We're going to have some sort of past. Our past is what has gotten us to where we're at now. And our past, believe it or not, is also going to propel us into the future. So we don't want to look back in the rearview mirror, but we want to know that whatever we've endured back then, you know, way back in that, that rearview mirror, whatever we did 
we are only going to do if we choose to do again. And we're only going to experience it if that's what we want to experience. But we can take an, our learning experience and move forward in our life. And then saying no to plans, not to be so direct and so definite on what needs to happen and when it needs to happen. You know, no one wants to do that. Absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit about the transition of moving forward into your life when you want to start to date. You want to start rebuilding a, a relationship, right? So here you say to yourself, I want to make this transition into dating. I, I feel like I'm only saying this, I meaning, uh, you know, how you're feeling. You're, you're saying to yourself, you know, I feel like I'm in a good place now. I feel like I can, I can move forward into rebuilding a relationship or building a relationship with someone else. But here's the thing. So often we go into dating and we go in with the approach that we're going for a partner, right? I'm going to go down, I'm going to sign up for that dating site and I'm going to now meet my partner. I'm going to meet my match, right? That's what we say to ourselves. I'm going to, I'm going to meet my match now. I'm going to get on that dating site and he's going to be there waiting for me because I'm there now. Here's the deal. You're along the way. You might very well meet your match, right? But along the way, you have to set the groundwork for that transition into dating. And I think so often we lose that, right? We have to, instead of thinking that we're going out and meeting our new partner, why not go out? And say we're going to build a relationship with someone. Why not go out and let's meet maybe our best friend? You know, let's go out and evaluate those that, that come into our lives, whether they're, what's that saying? Whether they're for a season, a reason, a season, or for life. Why don't we take it one step at a time? So often we want to just, you know, bombard and going in, we swipe to the left, we swipe to the right, you know, oh, the looks aren't there, the teeth isn't there, the smile is crooked. But here's the reality. If we want to really start embracing ourselves, we have to embrace others around us. And that's a big step, right? Because we have to say we're okay within ourselves to be able to step forward. And so we have to say we're okay with developing new friendships with a variety of people. And sometimes that variety is, is amazing because it opens your eyes to different people's individual's personalities. It opens your eyes to, you know, maybe different demographics of, uh, of where you were looking at dating. You know, so often we think maybe we should date just close at home or whatever. Maybe we could date further away. It just, it just, it just doesn't keep you in this, this uh, realm of uh, a cardboard box, you know? It, it allows you to be able to step forward. So first thing I think you need to do if you're starting to date after a relationship loss, if, you're, if this is your first approach to dating, I think you have to set the scene for it. You have to tell yourself, because if you don't, you set, your, you set yourself up for failure right? You have to set the scene. And Spy said in the scene of it, I'm saying that you have to start realizing that you're just going to embrace everyone and accept them for the way they are. And you want to go in and meet people that are different from yourself and that you want to enjoy with each step of the way as you're going through and you're meeting people. You want to just embrace them for who they are and understand them for who I'm falling apart, aren't I? You want to understand embrace them for who they are and understand them for who they are. And sometimes you'll be surprised when you do this that how amazing that will be. So you want to set the scene for success. You want to be, you want to understand yourself as how you want to go forward in your life. You know, what you want to do. Do you want to, do you want to have a romantic relationship? Do you want to have a friendship? But I think all of that, as you start to date and notice I say date, I'm not saying building a relationship, but as you start to date, you, you do, you start to think about what is good for you and, and think, you know, how you want to go forward in your life. And the thing is, is sometimes when we're so lonely, when we step out, 
of and dating. We step we step out in doing that. We you know we want to be romantic. We want to you know we're our hormones are up. You know, we've been off the market for a long time. I mean, guys and guys and gals, we've been off the market. We haven't had sex in a while. We haven't had any physical attraction. And so someone comes along and they they start showing us some attention and some affection and some things like that. And then we start getting all wishy-washy. And I think we have to back it up a little bit. We have to create of a friendship. You know, we want to go a friendship first approach to dating. And that's what we truly want to do. And I think if we do that, the power of creating a friendship is going to be like a magnet, right? What will happen is when you start going out and you're starting to date, you lose that mindset of this long-term relationship. You take that pressure off yourself and the pressure off those around you that you want to have this long-term relationship type of relationship when really all you're wanting right now is just to build a great friendship with someone. Then you decide on the merits of who they are and on the merits of who they show themselves to be, whether you can have a long-term relationship, whether you can actually be a partner. Now, I know for myself, just sharing this with you, I have had, um, you know, I think good relationships with, with many people that I have dated. Some of them have been, uh, shorter term because I realized it up front that, you know, although they may be great people, they just weren't really the right one for me. And so I felt like I, um, I, I needed to step back from that and just be a friend with them. Then there were others where I dated for a while that I, um, that, that I really thought, you know, they could be, I, I could really be with them for a long time, forever. And then the more, I got to know the person, the more of, of the real person started coming out. And so, so often I think as we're dating, we don't allow that to happen. We don't allow that time of space for someone to really be who they are. And so, and maybe I did the same thing. Maybe for them, they started to realize that I wasn't the right one for them equally so. So I think that we, by building a friendship, by saying to ourselves, we're going to get to know that person. We're not going to have judgment on them as soon as we first get out of the gate, right? We're not going to um, to treat them any differently than we would treat anyone else. We're going to listen to them attentively. We're going to have communications with them. We're going to enjoy the space and time that we're in. And then when something creates out of that, there's nothing but joy and you know, and wonderful. You can start to say to yourself, is this working for me? Is it not working for me? Then if you want to step forward, you know, out of that friend, and I'm not saying that you have to be in that friend zone, because for me, once you're in the friend zone, you're in the friend zone, you know, just, it just doesn't go anywhere else. It's like a cripple, crippling thing for me. But, but I'm, but as you're building a relationship, as you're building a friendship, then you can de- you can decide on whether you want to take it to the another level. If you want to be more romantic, more more sexual with it. If you want to go into that direction. If you feel uncomfortable with that for a good length of time, then something is telling you that you don't. That isn't a good thing for you, and that you don't want to to step into that. Guys, I'm going to tell you something a little bit here about. Um, about women. They love to be wooed. I mean, we do love to be wooed. And believe it or not, when you woo us, we'll woo you right back. You know, the sweeter and the kinder you are to us, the sweeter and the kinder we're going to be to you, you know. And then what happens is we build this wonderful friendship and this build beautiful relationship just continues to blossom and blossom. You know, I was talking to somebody one time and they said, oh, I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I don't do any of that courting, that wooing, that anything like that. I don't don't do anything like that. And I asked him why. Because he didn't want to set that expectation up. So I thought to myself, well, what does that mean? If he doesn't want, he doesn't want to show kindness. He doesn't want to show interest. He doesn't want to show kindness. He doesn't want to be loving, right? Um, he doesn't want to be attentive. What does he want? 
what kind of relationship would that be? You know, certainly wouldn't be one that I think you would want or I would want, right? Because he's, this gentleman was trying to set his boundaries because he was hurt. So he wasn't emotionally ready to go into building a relationship with somebody else. He wasn't emotionally ready to date, right? He hadn't let go of his past. He hasn't let go of his his ex, looking at every woman to be like his ex. So if I give you something, you know, what he was saying is if I give you something, if I give you, if I start to give you my heart, if I start to give you my, let my feelings down, you'll hurt me again. And that's sad because you know, this gentleman didn't realize that he needed to work a little bit more on himself. He wanted to go out and just move into something really like he had before. You know, he wanted to move into another relationship of emptiness like he had before. But he didn't really want that. But he didn't want to give, you know, over. He didn't want to let something go because he was afraid of being hurt. And I think as we build relationships with people, whether they be just friendships or something, you know, more in depth, right? We can't be afraid of being hurt because sometimes love is mucky, you know? Sometimes it's, it's, just, it's just there. And then other times it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. It's happiness. It's like, you know, stepping outside in a nice, cool breeze and a sunny day. It's, it's just embarking on something new and bright and wonderful. So I think if we want that for ourselves, if we've made the choice to be able to move forward in a relationship, we've got to be able to allow a piece of us. We have to allow that to give that to someone else. Because, you know, any kind of relationship, whether it be just a friendship, you know, I have got some very solid, strong friendships. And they're because I've given a piece of myself to them. And equally, they have given something back. We've honored and, and respected that. And that's a bond that we've created, right? It's a bond. So if you want a relationship to go deeper, you have to keep allowing your heart to be open and, and to allow that to happen to you. But I think it's so important as we step forward into dating that we rise into the friendship, right? And we want to create all different kinds of friendships. And there's like new dating sites out there. I'm going to have something out there that's going to be so different than anything as ever was before. And the reason being is because I know how difficult it is to be able to step out of relationship loss. I've done it before many times. And being able to build another relationship with somebody. So I know that in order to do that, it really takes all the things that we've talked about tonight, right? And it takes being emotionally ready to be able to do that, to be able to give freely to someone else. And we have to be able to share with our family members, you know, that we're building a relationship with other people, that we don't have something going on that's secretive or whatever like that, that we're going to say to ourselves, we're going to go ahead and we're going to step into this arena of making friends and having friends. We're going to be a friend, right? So I think as we move forward in our lives, you know, it's very, very important to work on ourselves and keep working on ourselves. The best gift you can give someone is uh, the gift of yourself and giving that freely and openly and honestly and joyfully is tremendous. And if they are the right person for you, they will they will do that themselves. They will come back tenfold. 
And so here's the thing is there's many, many different types of relationships, many, many different depths of relationships. So what I'm going to ask you is I'm going to ask you to think about this and think about the kind of relationship you would like to have with someone. But most of all, I want you to think about the kind of relationship that you would like to give someone. Because falling in love with someone, giving someone your heart and, and having an in-depthful um, bonding type of relationship is not what you're going to get. It's what you're going to give. Right? Because to be, because that's when you truly know you're with the right person is if they continuously to give to you over and over again. You know, I remember, you know, there was a, a time in, in my past relationship that um, I remember him always saying, well, you always do this and you do that and you do whatever. But never did he ever think the reason I did it was because I loved him. You know, all he could see was that I was doing things for him. And uh, even though he wanted that, right? But he didn't understand the, the purpose of it behind it. It wasn't that I was doing those things because I just wanted to do them. I did them because I loved him. And so that's the kind of relationship you want. You want a relationship with someone else that's going to give you exactly what you give to them. And that's tricky. So that is what you truly want. I remember a friend of mine said, um, it was a friend, it was actually my girlfriend's boyfriend. And he said to me, Cece needs someone to love her more than she loves them. Can you imagine what a beautiful relationship that would be to have someone truly love you more? But could they ever? You know, I think if we're stepping out and we're dating, we're starting to date someone, I think we need to step back and we need to start thinking about the kind of relationships we want. You know, you know, does he, you know, does it irritate you if he doesn't take the trash out every night? but he brings you flowers on the weekend or that he washes your car. You know, there's all kinds of, of action. See, love is a feeling that we, that we want and we desire and we crave, right? We all crave to be loved. We all crave to be wanted. That's all a feeling. But so, so, so many times in a relationship, it's action that takes place. So what I want you to do is ask yourself, as you're asking yourself all the other questions I told you, to, <laughs> but, you know, ask yourself what kind of relationship you really want. And if you're in a relationship, ask yourself about the action that's behind it. You know, what did the other person do? You know, you know, relationships are very, very hard and they're up and down and up and down. And for a relationship to stand the test of time, you know, I've had a girlfriend for, gosh, let's see, I want to say 40 years, 30, 40 years. It has to be over, well over 35. And the thing is, is my expectation of her is no different than what it was when we were first, you know, when I first met her. Why is it, should it be different when we're out there dating, right? Why should your expectation of that person be different? You know, so... So what I'm saying, and I hope I'm saying this correctly, but what I'm saying is take the merit of the person that you're involved with and assess it as to where it's going to work for you, right? Give to the other person what you can give. So often, you know, I, I've said many times that um, I felt that I was loved in a relationship but I wasn't loved enough, you know, because I had needs that maybe were different. So I need to know what, you know, because the thing is, is the need, the need that I have, if I can explain this, the need that I have wasn't that the person didn't love me. 
is that his actions didn't follow, right? You can love someone, but then you can hold back and not give them what that person needs. And if you have built a friendship and a relationship, you will know what that person needs. So then if you hold back, then it's your choice. And that relationship is only going to go as far as it's going to go. We have a decision to make. You know, we, we can choose to be as happy or as sad, as lonely, or together with someone as we want. Right? So tonight we've talked about relationships. We've talked about our expectations of relationships. We've talked about, you know, relationships as it's forming. So what I'd like for you to take away with you is what kind of relationship do you want? And what are you willing to give to get it? So it's a big question. And I think it's something that evolves over time. And it also evolves over the person that you meet. And so I hope that this helped you. I hope it hasn't confused you, <laughs> but I hope it's helped you to understand that building a relationship is simply that it's building. It's a stepping stone to moving forward in your life. And so when you start out into the dating arena and you, you start as not searching for your match or your partner, but you start going out saying to yourself, you know what, I'm going to make some friends along the way. And as I'm making those friendships, I'm going to embrace myself and I'm going to enlighten myself and I'm going to learn, keep learning about what it is that I'm looking for. Because so often we don't know everything that we want. And sometimes, you know, when we meet the right person, we'll know that. So, so all I've got for you tonight, I hope you enjoyed the show. You know, you guys can uh, catch me here on Facebook anytime. You can catch me CC Chats. You can catch me on my personal Facebook on any of the going solo um, arenas here that we have. Some of them are pages for our shows. Some of them are groups that we have. We've got a going solo divorce group and we have a My Friends Connect, um, which is our Tampa Bay divorce support group. You're welcome to join those if you'd like. I have a brand new site out now. It's called Going Solo Next Step. That is to help people with um, going through divorce or relationship loss and transitioning into being single. And, uh, you know, that's a big step to transition your life from what you thought it was going to be into what it is now and what, what it's going to be, you know, what into the new, into this new arena of being a uh, single. And uh, then also the transition of dating, because I think that we have to really start embracing that transition um, as we go into dating and as we date, right? Because it doesn't just end as we date, because every time we meet someone, we learn a little bit more about them and we learn a whole lot about us. So uh, I think that's why it's so important to have friends and to make friends along the way and uh, embrace other people, uh, you know, just joyfully, just, just embrace them joyfully as to where they're at. You know, so often you um, can meet someone and then you realize they're just not really on the same page as you, but you can embrace them, right? For, for where they're at and what they're doing. So I hope that that is something that you will do. Of course, you know that I'm on Instagram. We have got a pretty active Instagram. I'm thanking the Instagram people. Actually, I forgot I was going to go live on Instagram tonight doing this show and I got to start doing that, but we've got a wonderful Instagram um, following and I love you for that. We have a super uh, YouTube channel, WGSNDB Going Solo Network YouTube channel. We've got like over 40 some thousand um, listeners there, which I'm just delighted as all get out. And uh, we've got like over 600 people have subscribed to the channel. I'd like to see by the end of the year up to a thousand. It would be 
it would really rock my boat. So if you haven't gone on the channel, please go and listen to any shows that you want to listen to. We'd love to have you. And then also we have our live streaming uh, radio station. Um, you just go on goingsolomedia.com and it's streaming right there. So we have that live 24 hours a day and our TV uh, is also hooked up to that. So we have a live streaming TV on various different subjects. You just go into the particular subject and click on it. And we've got some great shows there. Well, this is Cece. That's all for tonight. You can um, email me. Let me give you my email. If you'd like to email me, you can email me with any questions or anything that you might have. I'd love to hear from you. That's going solo network at gmail.com. Let me know if you like the show, what you'd like to listen to. I'm going to have, um, we're going to have some new shows coming out in uh, November. And I'm really excited. We're going to have the barbershop show. Hmm, that's going to be new and fun. And we're going to have Startup with Date the Right One. And then I think I'm going to have a rocking new show of my own that's going to be coming out. Something totally different. And uh, I've been working on it for a while. I had to put it back a little bit because dad was not well. And so uh, I'm hoping that I can move forward with that now. But I love you guys. I hope that this helped you because I think relationships are so vital. You know, they're so vital to us because we don't want to be lonely in life. And we won't be if we have if we create friendships around us. Right. If we love people for where they're at, you know, we understand the merits of their of of their personalities, the individualness of them, their values. We can de decide if we want to take it further, if we want to be romantically inclined with them, or if we just want to embrace them for who they are. But I think as we move, move forward in dating, I think we need to step back from this uh, thinking that we're going to be matched and it's going to be a partner forever. And I think if we shift our mindset to really making good friendships and bonding with people. I think we'll be surprised along the way, not only how we can em embrace and how we can, how they can embrace our lives, but also how we can embrace theirs. So friendships are very, very important to us. And it's vital, I think, as humankind. And uh, I think in today's world, we need it. We need it more than ever with everything that's going on around us. We need to um to know that somebody's got our back and we have theirs so anyhow i love you guys this is cc with going solo i'm cc Schatz, and it's a joy as always to be with you you can catch me on going solomedia.com and also on our uh, youtube channel which is wgsn db going solo network i love you and i'll talk to you later bye for now